Welcome to God's Vision in Motion. Thank you for joining me today. I'm joined today by my beautiful wife. And what we're going to, our subject today will be about salvation and why. Receiving Jesus as Lord and Savior. And why do I need? And we have the solution. And I, right now, I'd like to have a word of prayer. Father God, I thank you right now for your word. I thank you for those that will be tuning in, Father God, that their heart will be open that the ears will be re receptive to hear and to receive what the Spirit of God has given us because our heart has been tuned in to people being saved, genuine knowing that they are saved. And Father God, we thank you for the, the people that you have planted in our midst and over this internet, a tool that we can use to reach someone, to reach those who are lost, that's someone that will grab a hold to these little nuggets that we will give them so that they will know that they know that they are know that they are saved. And we want to point out scriptures right now, right now that we're pointing out some scriptures so that you can base your relationship on the word of God, not by feeling, but by the word of God. And I thank you right now as I turn to my wife, honey, is there something that you might want to say before we get started? Yes, I would. Thank you so much for visiting us, for viewing us this, uh, this afternoon. And we're going to be talking uh, on the subject of salvation, why it's important. And it's very important that everyone knows why they need to accept Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. And not only to accept him, but to know why the need, the solution, what you can do to accept Jesus Christ as, as your personal Lord and Savior. So when someone asks you, you don't have to say, I go to church every Sunday, or my family member is a, is a member at, at such and such a ministry. You need to know that you know that you know for yourself. So when you meet Jesus Christ on that day, when you pass away from this earth, because death is sure, there are two things we're going to have in this world. Life is uncertain. But death is sure. And when you pass from this earth, you need to know that Jesus Christ is the Lord of your life. And you will go to heaven and be with him on that last day. So I'm going to turn, the, I'm going to turn this session over to my husband, uh, Willie. And okay. I should say Evangelist Willie. And we're Five. going to get down to the core of why you need to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And, and, and this is the need because a lot of times we have, uh, you and I have sat in, in, in places and we've heard people uh, giving all. We know the people was there. The people came to get saved and we've heard people uh, uh, leading people to Christ. But, but based upon the scripture and thing that we know, we're concerned about it. We're very concerned. We're very concerned about it, and, and we have a heart to see people genuine come to the Lord and genuine be saved and, and know that they know so that they don't come running back the next week doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over and never come into the knowledge of the truth. And we can have the truth because the Word of God is true. And if we follow what the Word of God says and how God have planted the thing because the thing that God is going to look over is his word. That's what he look over, and that's what he confirmed. And so we want to look at Romans. Let's go to Romans 5, uh, what I said, 12. I said Romans 5, 12. And it says here, this is why, this is the need. This is why all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But this is a way back. He says here, wherefore is by one man a sin and sin, Sin, it then says sins, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned, all have sinned, and so what we want to say then, but then when we have in, uh, uh, we have a, a one man disobedient, but the obedience of one, that's why Christ came, he came to restore what Adam messed up. Yes. He came to restore that. And if you find, and the thing about it, you need a Bible. You need a good Bible. You need a Bible that says, and, and uh, the Bible that I have here is the King James Bible. King James, because a lot of things that's in other Bibles, and I have checked them out, 
It's not even in there. Some of these things are not in there. And so you need a Bible that really talks. The Holy Spirit uses the Word of God to be able to minister to you as you begin to read the Word of God. Now here, we're going on to uh, the book of uh, uh, John, what is it? John, John 3, 16. John 3, 16. Let's look at that because we always like to, for the people to see what we're talking about. And I know a lot of people know John 3, 16. It's almost at every ball game. If you look in the corner of the dot when they playing, somebody out there have to sign up. Saying. So really, uh, it's really no excuse for a person not to know. John, what we say, John, John 3, 3 16. 16. And it tells us, John. For God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son, who is Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And, and, and we need to underline, underline that. He says eternal life. Yes. And that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave. It was something God is doing, not us trying to, Right. Do something and bring God down to what we think he ought to be. God is doing something to bring us up to where he's at. Mm -hmm. And this only can be done through the Lord Jesus Christ. Accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Not going to church. Not doing a whole lot of work. Running around trying to get some good at points. Doing this and doing that. And working yourself down to the bone. But he came and he says here eternal life, that you would have everlasting life. And this, this word life here is talking more about just breathing air. Life. He's talking about your everyday thing, everything that, that you do. But if you had, he said if you acknowledge him, but I, that's another teaching. And so, but I want to show you in the book of uh, uh, Ephesians. Let's go to the book of Ephesians because everything that we do when we minister to people, we want them to see from the scripture to know that they know that they know, not being confused, every, am I saved? Am I lost? And then the other part, I want to show some. I want to show you some other scripture. What I said, uh, uh, Ephesians. Ephesians two eight. Okay, let's look at the book of Ephesians. Two eight. It says here in the book of Ephesians and two eight. It says here, for by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourself, it is a gift of God, not of works that any man should boast. So it's not about something that you can earn. It's not something that you can do. And I would like to stick a pen here to say it means to repent from what you're doing and turn to Christ. And let me say something right okay. here. You know, where we're saying uh, in verse uh, 8, it says, for by grace, that grace we're making reference to is love. Right. It was the love of God who sent his precious son. And you know what? Jesus was the gift. It's a free gift. And all we have to do is receive him. Receive him. And what we're trying to do today is just point out a few scriptures that we can help somebody out there. Because we realize and we see everybody walking around wondering about asking questions. I hear all kind of foolish questions that pop up about, well, where did so-and-so come from? Who was so-and-so... This is so serious. You need to stop talking, worrying about where did this person come from in the Bible, and what mm -hmm. you need to know about your salvation. Yes, that's key. Because if you die, I know of friends and people that I left their presence. It got home, and somebody called me, and said they were dead. So this is something that you need to stop worrying about. Well, who who was John Baptist? Well, where was he born? Who was his mother? And all these other things that's in there. It's true to read about those kind of things, mm -hmm. but you need to know, if I die, am I saved, am I lost? Am I saved, am I lost? And you can know, when we're going to show, continue to show you scripture and the Bible to, so that you can base your relationship on the word of God, what God says about it, because a lot of folks, uh, a lot of preachers, they haven't been called, so you need to know and you need to be led by the spirit of God because there's so many antichrists out there today. You need to know that you know. And let's go over to, uh, after, uh, let's go to Romans chapter 10, verse 9. Is that what? Romans 10, uh, okay, now. Um, 
did you want to uh, expound on Ephesians or go to Romans? Yeah, well, we, we talk about uh, a book of Ephesians that it's a gift. Yes. It said by grace, mm -hmm. something freely given. He said he lavished it upon us. So God, was, when he was doing something, he didn't ask us about it. It was something that we don't have to go and worry about. It. He gave us the book. And all we have to do is get in here to see what God says about it. Because men out there are saying all kind of things. People are telling people about purgatory. You won't find that in this Bible. I have read the Bible through. And I've looked in all kinds of, to try to find out about certain words. When I hear think, preachers say things, I go and look them up to see where it's at in the Bible. And I can't, a lot of stuff that they're saying, I can't find it in the Bible. But now the only thing most people harp on, be diligent about, is the finances. They know Malachi. About tithing and offering. They're well on that for a long time. But I believe God wants us right now to minister to, to, the, to the laws like never before because there's so many side issues out there. The, the devil is throwing so many things at people today. And I don't care who you are, how much money you have, how you need Christ. You need a Savior. And, and the thing about you will never, ever have fulfillment in your life until you know Christ. The Bible, Jesus said, I am the vine. So you need to get come back and get hooked up to the vine so that then you will know and have life in you because this life is in Christ. I don't care how much sex you have, how much drug you have, and you do it, why? Because you're a sinner. You're trying to fulfill something that you will never fulfill in things until you come back to the one that made you. And this is the way back to him. Let's look at Romans chapter 10. Verses 9 and verses 10. Verses 9 and 10. Would you want, did you, did Certainly. you Certainly. Okay. Let's uh, turn over to uh, Romans 10 verses 9 and 10. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart, which is the spirit, the inner core of man, believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth, your confession is made unto salvation. So if you confess Jesus with your mouth according to the word, according to God's word, and you believe with all your spirit, in your spirit, the core of man, that God has raised his son, Jesus Christ, from the dead, you will be saved. Amen. Because, as I stated, because with your heart, your spirit, you believe that with all of your might, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he died and he arose from the dead for our justification, you will be saved. Now, a lot of times I hear this. To bypass Jesus, the Bible said no man can come through <laughs> except... You have to come through God first. He's oh. the one that sent the gift. Yes. And the way back is you can't even get to God unless you acknowledge Jesus. You come to God in the name of Jesus. But I hear a lot of people are saying right away, that they, they just ignore the part about God. They say, Jesus, come into my heart. But you got to believe something. You have to be talking to God first. You, you know, let's, let's look at this again. It says here, but what says it? The word is not verse 8. Let's look at verse 8. But the word is, but what says it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God had raised him, believe in thy heart. Believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth. Believe it. Now, that word believe it needs to be on the line because it doesn't say believe, but it said believe it. Unto, and for with the heart man believe unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now, I hear people are saying, Forgive me of my sin. Uh, cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Now, I want to stick a pen there because 
without receiving Christ as your Savior and Lord, you've been a sinner. You got to come to Christ. But you had no righteousness. So forgive me. I've I, I, I sinned against you. Before that time, God never knew you until your name goes into the Lamb Book of Life. Now, once you accept Jesus Christ, it means to repent, turn around. Where you was going this way, if you were shacking, you don't want to shack no more. If you, you're a liar, you're a thief, all these different things, the Bible talks about you put off the old man. God's not going to take the stuff away from you. He wants you to willful serve him. He wants you to come and say, I can't steal no longer. I can't do this anymore. I can't fornicate any longer. I can't do this any longer. Why? Because now I'm in Christ and he will fill all in all, all your desires. He will fulfill if you allow him to. But you have to, again, we see here, he said, the, the word is nigh thee, in your mouth. Then he goes on to tell us, death and life in the power of the tongue. So you have to change. The Bible tells us, be transformed by the renewing of our, mind, of our mind. So we have to be like the computer. Reprogram. Reprogram your mind. Reprogram your thinking. Well, how do you do that? With the word of God. You begin to, after you get saved, Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, not just because you some you a drug addict or something, and now you're looking for an escape, and now you're out there somebody bring in and give you a few lessons, and now you're out there preaching. All you're gonna do is confuse other, mm -hmm. other people. You need to be rooted, Amen. get under the Word of God for a long time. A lot of us need the Word of God to be rooted in us so that we can stand. All you're gonna do is go out and try to make a mockery out of you out of God, out hollering and screaming and, and going on and don't even know somebody asks you, are you saved? Well, you start scratching your head because you don't even know whether you're saved according to the scriptures. And we, and my wife and I, we have discussed it. We have prayed about what's on, it's on our hearts about people knowing that they're saved. We minister to people all the time to go to churches, come out of the church. And all we have to do is just ask them, are you saved? And then there's another, are you born again? Do you know Jesus as your Lord? Well, you know, I, my grandparents, they went to, they were brought up in this, in this church, but they don't know about their own salvation, going to church all the time, sitting in a church with a Bible. And most of the time, the Bible is never even open or encouraged. The Bible tells us how to teach, how we need to be able to put them in remembrance of that which they already received. And I want to say something right here because I notice uh, when I have an opportunity to minister to some people when they go to the altar for certain uh, prayer matters, a Christian will think because they have strayed away from Christ. I'm talking about the people who have, who have officially accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, but they do not understand what the pattern is for becoming a Christian. The, uh, some of the people think if they have messed up and strayed away from Christ, they have to come and accept him again. And so Amen. that is something we want to expound on later on when it comes to the assurance of salvation and other things are surrounding that. Because it's, it, it's so pertinent that people understand what their relationship is with Christ once they accept him. Amen, and you're so right because we, you, like you said, we love ministering to people wherever they are. If we're out in the restaurants and different places that we... Or even uh, in the beauty salon. Yeah. I, I found out the lady who was doing my hair is unbelievable. A young lady, you know, she had a chair with pastors and prayer room workers for many years. And I asked her one day, the first, the first day I went to see her, I asked her had she accepted Jesus Christ as her personal Lord and Savior, and she said no. And I asked her if she wanted to accept Christ, and I ministered the word, the word to her as to why that Jesus is a gift and what she can do to accept Jesus if she thoroughly believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he died and he was raised from the dead. She said yes. And shortly thereafter, she had a massive stroke, mm -hmm. and the doctors did not think she was going to live. And she, uh, she said when she was under, I, I'm assuming she was in a coma, all she could think about was the day I ministered to her. And she was so happy that I led her to Christ. 
and she is up and about now. When the doctors said they didn't think she would make it. That's why it's so important, you know, that, you know, when we who are believers should take the time to minister to everyone who cross our pathway because we cannot assume everyone we have contact with is saved. And we just really need to be more, more determined to minister to the people we come in contact with on a daily basis because you don't know that person may not live to, to take their next breath. And so I'm going to let my uh, my husband expound uh, on this deeper when it comes to, are we going to be discussing the assurance of salvation now, or are we well, going to continue with the previous this is subject? Based upon what you said, then I want to put the script, uh, lay this script out because it's so apropos to what you're talking about. And and I want to, this script here is in uh, Romans chapter, uh, chapter 8 and verse 13. And it tells us what if we're led, our spirit led life, the, the Holy Spirit will point out when you're out to minister to people, how to minister to people. He's our teacher. He's our guide. And, and here it says, for if we live after the flesh, we shall die. But if we are through the spirit, do modify the deeds of the body, we shall live. And then it goes on in chapter 14. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So that lets you know right then that you need to have a spiritual a life in the spirit. So as you begin to walk out into the, and, and, and when you was talking about, see, that was the Holy Spirit. Yes. Absolutely. Prompting you to minister, minister to, her. to her. Because God loves us so much that he'll jump over everything that he can to get you to open your eyes that you may know what is the hope in which you've been called. No longer God want us walking around. He loves us so much. And, and the, thing, the thing about it is that it's so simple. And all you have to do is now the thing you have to do is stop talking to your friends about it. You might have to drop off a toxic relationship because all they're going to do is talk you out of what you yes. believe. Well, you know, uh, my so-and-so died from that. I've never seen anybody get healed. I never see. You got to lay aside all that. Get away from those kind of people and begin to pick up the word of God. So I'm going to live from you. Repent means I'm going to turn away. I'm going to change. Yes. And I can justify mm -hmm. that because I did that. I had lots of friends. I stayed out of home. I had all kind of, well, I call them leeches now because they weren't really <laughs> friends. They were just tagging around for a drink or something other like that. But they weren't really friends. But the bottom line is God will send you friends once you get saved. But the bottom line is forget about friends. Jesus said, I would, Jesus said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. So you have a friend in Jesus that will stick closer than any friend that I ever known because Jesus won't talk about you. Your friends will walk off and leave you. And so one of the things that we want to do is I like First Corinthians. I like Second Corinthians. Let's go to Second Corinthians five. Was that five seventeen? Okay. Did you want to uh, expound on John one twelve? Oh yeah, because uh, uh, one twelve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one twelve. Because a lot of people talk uh, John one twelve. One uh, twelve, and it talks about uh, if you would like to read it for me. But it talks about everybody seem to think everybody's a child of God. Mm -hmm. And the Bible doesn't say that. Now, I would like for you to read that. Okay, I'm this is uh, the book of John, the first chapter, verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. He says here, but as many receive him, but as many as receive him to them. How would you need to have become one, have to become a child? Of, he says here, but as many as receive him to them, gave he power to become sons of God, even to them that believed on his name. 
And so that's the, the good news is about it. That's why it's so important that you must be born again. As, as uh, Jesus was talking to Nicodemus, and he was telling him about a spiritual birth. Nicodemus thought he was talking about a physical, some, uh, 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 some that he could understand. Mm -hmm. But he was talking about being born from above. It's where God who's over that, that individual, just like Jesus came. And, and since he's God, he can do what he want to. You know, he can, he can change things. So the good news where he says Jesus was trying to talk to Nicodemus about a, a heavenly thing, and Nicodemus were relating it to an earthly thing. And we are born, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, God's take you as a believer and put you into the body. It's something he does, not men, because a lot of times people get this baptism mixed up where God baptizes you into the body of Christ. That's how he sees you. you in the body of Christ, so no longer he looking directly at you. He's looking at Jesus, the one that shed his blood on Calvary, on the cross, for your salvation, for us. And even if you'd have been the only person on the face of the earth, Christ would have died for you. And so the good news is about it, I like it because in, in 2 Corinthians, because when I came to Christ, I started naming all the stuff. I said, but Lord, I was this. I, was, I, I, I did all this. I, got to, I can't help myself. I did all these, all these things. Now let's go over to first Corinth, uh, Second Corinthians. Uh, what is that, 517? First Corinthians. Second Corinthians, 517. Okay, first Corinthians is Second Corinthians. Okay, let's go over there. I'm gonna, uh, we're going to read uh, 517. And I like this because it really set me free. Because I was dragging a lot of ba uh, uh, baggage around all the time. It was always bothering me. My life had been messed up. I've done a lot of stuff that I was sorry about. I knew I couldn't do nothing about it. I know man ain't going to never forgive you, your relatives and everybody else. <laughs> but I called on the, on God mm -hmm. to help me in this, open my eyes that I can understand what am I doing. And if this is all to life, it's not worth living. And so I got a hold to this. It says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation, creature, Old things are passed away. Old things are passed. Behold, all things are new. Yes. So as far as my life back then, he says, he could say, I never knew you. Your name was not written in the book of life. Your name was not in the book of life. I, no, but I was a good Methodist. <laughs> Your name not in the, in the book. Well, my wife was a good Baptist. None of that matter. What you were before you came to Christ. He says here, therefore, if any man be in Christ, be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. That means your name will put in the Lamb book of life. Now, once I come to Christ, I repent. Mm -hmm. He never says here if you confess your sin, because even if he did, I couldn't have got saved. Because I couldn't remember all the things that I did. It's impossible. I could not remember what I was doing sometime when I came in. I could I couldn't confess my sin. Which and then the Bible says in in First uh, John one nine that uh, people are using that scripture for sinners. Mm -hmm. yes. That scripture is really not for sinners because at before you come to Christ, you have no righteousness. Righteous means right standing with God. Now when I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Now I'm back in right standing with God. The fellowship have been, I'm back in his, I'm back in, my name is written in the Lamb Book of Life. I'm his child now. But before that time, I belonged to the devil. I was a child of the devil and I did everything the devil asked me to do. So when I repented mm -hmm. to come back, to came to serve, not come back, but came to Find out my destiny in the Lord because I'd heard so much of stuff about re how religion will do you. You have to do this. You can't eat this. You can't drink this. You can't, can't, 
can't. Then I said, well, what can I do? What can we do? But he says, when you come to him, he cleansed you. Once you accept Jesus Christ, you, you have no past. And I thought about that. I look back at Paul. When Jesus, when he had a relationship with Jesus Christ, <coughs> when he was knocked off the horse and he said, Lord, the first thing he come up doing said, Lord, what, what would you have me do? Jesus never said, well, you know, you killed all the crew. You did this. You got to repent of this and repent of your sin. Never said nothing. But Paul said, I wronged no man. I have no past. So when you come to Christ, that old man that you would think that you did, you become a new creature. Your eyes become open. Now you can know what is the hope in which he have called you. And so the good news is that if you get into the scriptures and begin to apply these, take them off the pages and apply it to your life, say, oh, you said I'm this. I can have it. Now, one of the <clears throat> things that I'm finding that Christians do not know when they get saved, you need to know that you have an enemy. You need to know that. And listen, let's go over to, uh, let's see, what is it? Okay, I want to say something okay, on honey. this. You know, when, you talk, when we're talking about uh, when we accept Christ and see, yes, when you mess up, you're supposed to ask the Lord for forgiveness, but you do not play with the Lord like he's a toy. You have to be sincere about your un the forgiveness you're asking the Lord for. Amen. Because I know some people who think, well, you know what the Lord said. You know, if I mess up, he can come to me, and I, I mean, I can go to him and ask for forgiveness, and he'll forgive me no matter how many times I mess up. You are treading on, da on dangerous ground when you do that. God's scripture is, God's word is not telling us to play games with him. You have to have a sincere heart about what you are asking the Lord for forgiveness about. You have to make sure you are ready and willing to fully repent of your wrongdoing and study God's word. Amen. That's so apropos because, see, one of the things about it, even God forgive you. Let's just say God forgive you. Mm -hmm. But, see, we have an enemy that doesn't forgive. He know what you did. And what he would do is bring sickness upon you unless you come back and repent of that thing. He will come and bring death upon you. He have a right to you yes. until you come back and ask God to forgive you. Yes. And even at that, remember David. David, was the Bible tells us, was after God's own heart. He was a man after God, but he messed up. And that thing, it, it, it family, it happened to his family. He had That sin had to be paid because the wages of sin is death. Now, Let's look at this here because every believer, when he come and accept, come and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And I think about this a lot of time when you're going into the army and places like that to fight in a war and stuff like that. The first thing I think that the orientation would be to tell you about your enemy, how to fight this enemy. Now we're in a spiritual war. The spiritual war, God tell us that he's, Oh, trying to open our eyes to let you know in the book of John, uh, John 10, 10, and most people know this, he says a thief. Well, who is a thief? A lot of people don't know who, the, they just read that. But the thief, he said, but the thief coming not but, to, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. And I have come that you might have life and that you have life more abundant. Now we got to know who this thief is. The Bible tells us the thief is the devil. He come to kill and steal. So when you step over that line, when you step over that line, if you don't get back and say, Father, forgive me, cleanse me from this, help me. I messed up again. I blew it again. But the, the enemy is still coming to remind you of how bad you were. I thought you was, I thought you was a Christian. You wouldn't have did that if you were genuine saved. He come to speak to you as you come in your... When you're minding your own business, when you sleep, he never rests. He's always <clears throat> on the tear. He never sleeping, so he's always coming to confuse you. And the thing that he want to steal from you is your witness. Yes. He want to get you off it so you don't go tell nobody. You're ready to stop going to church. You're ready to stop doing this. And then another thing, let's, uh, 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 let's go on. But you need to know, I like to always let you know, you're in a spiritual war. And you need to know that you have this enemy. And the Bible tells us about he's the, he's, he's the one that brings death, not God. God is not killing. 
And the Bible tells us about the, the last enemy that will be destroyed is death. And so the thing about it, if God telling you, he's, and he said, the one that have the power of death, that is the devil. And I want to say this right here on this scripture about the thief comes not but for to steal and kill and to destroy. And Jesus says, I have come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. See, the Lord is so loving. He not only said that we're going to have life, but place emphasis on the word more. He wants us to have life more abundantly, not just abundantly. And we can only find out what our life should be about by studying God's word. We have to apply God's word to our everyday walk in order for us to know what this abundant life, the more abundant life is mm -hmm. for us as Christians in the body of Christ. Amen. And, and uh, I don't like to skip over stuff, but I'm, I'm so dogmatic about it because I know when I got saved and, and someone said to me, says, uh, 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 sir, would you like to receive the Holy Spirit? I said, I said, well, what is it? What the Holy Spirit? He says he give you power. Mm -hmm. He'll help you. And and I know at that particular time, I knew I needed some help. And I asked him, I said, is it from God? He said, yeah, it's, I'm going to point out scriptures to show you from the Bible. They had a prayer room that took me in because if they talked to me outside, I probably wouldn't have stayed. Mm -hmm. And a prayer room where and to be able to minister to you one-on-one -on -one so that you can understand what you have in Christ, what you can do in Christ, to get you rooted and get you kind of grounded before they let you go out hollering and do your hunk if you love Jesus and putting bumper stickers and stuff all on your cars and hollering and go about Jesus because one of the things that they don't, a lot of places like that, they don't tell you that you got an enemy to your faith. And he doesn't quit. He comes to remind you of what a dog you used to be. And he keep that before your faith. But you need power. You need the Holy Spirit to help you because in the natural, even after being saved, you cannot live this life without the Holy Spirit. You cannot love without the Holy Spirit. Now, you can do like you do on, uh, what is that, New Year's Eve, make New Year's resolution, and you already know they don't last long. Mm -hmm. You know, thing that you were planning on doing, I'm going to work out, I'm going to do this, and I, I, a whole lot of stuff, and all of a sudden, after the a month or two passed by, the holidays gone, you know, forgot all about it. Now the thing is out in the garment sale somewhere, the workout machine. I'm going to burn these calories. And I'm going to do this. And, but you cannot do anything spiritually without the Holy Spirit helping you. The Holy Spirit will help you, but you have to ask him to help you. He's not a person. He's, not, he's a person, just like Jesus was a person. He's a person. He come along to help you when you can't. When you begin to say, if I'm going to acknowledge him, then he will help you and direct you, your path. But the Holy Spirit has to be, and no, I, I can't do this. It's kind of like the passing gear when you're trying to pass somebody and all of a sudden your car looks like it's going to choke down. <laughs> and, and you can't get over, but and then you hit that passing gear and you, I'm going to, uh, but see, that's the way the Holy Spirit will kick in when you can't. Because he wants you to serve him willing for. He wants you to be able to recognize that he's the one that's going to help you. That you can do nothing without the Holy Spirit. And I thank you for this time. Because now if you're out there, at this particular time, and you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, would you bow your heads and let's pray this prayer. Say, so, dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I'm a sinner and I can't save myself. But you said, if I confess with my mouth, believe in my heart, that you raised Jesus from the dead, that I will be saved. I believe that. And I right now, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior, my Redeemer. And according to your holy word, which could not lie, right now, I am saved. And now I'll go along with that. I would like to pray with you to receive the Holy Spirit. And I want to lay hands on you by proxy. Receive the Holy Spirit. With the evidence of speaking with tongues, just go ahead and open your mouth and let your tongue move around. And all of a sudden, that's your faith. And as you begin to open up and speak in your heavenly language, 
not a long language that you understand. Because one of the things about it, people get so caught up in stuff they claim they don't understand. There's a whole lot of stuff you don't understand. I don't understand how that television can send signals to us all over the world. But guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to enjoy it. I don't understand how my telephone can pick up pictures and send pictures. I don't understand it. But guess what? I enjoy it. I don't have to understand it. And so the bottom line is just be a doer of it. What you have heard, put it into practice. And I guarantee you, God will move in your life like never before. And I want to thank you for this time. And if this ministry has been a blessing, this lesson has been a blessing to you, there's a, a thing on the screen where you want to maybe send an offering or something and support this ministry. We would appreciate any amount that you will send to help us continue to take this message to the world. Because we love what we're doing. We love the Lord, have given our life to the Lord over what they said. Many years. You were saved yes. back at 12. What, 12? 15. 15. I got saved in 1980. That I know. I was a good Methodist. But I, did, I didn't know Jesus. Nobody shared the word of God with me. But I want to thank you because God is able, and not just he's yes. able, but he will do the thing yes. based upon written in this word. We have tested the water, and we love him with all our heart. Thank you for joining us. God bless you.